Agadani. Million Raganani. Albaka. Baka and Cordan. Yo, not transfer us. Yeah, transfer us. Have code in you. Okay. What's that? You see, like this sort of. Ah, that's a good one. Sorry. Agadani. Million Rock. Albaka. Baka. But Allah Savi Sotaria. Ah, but my kid and Nunkun Marakaria. Ah, Janum, you are not forest the bureau. Gambia Tonkona Lombaria bureau. Ah. Berimkoi na for kato. Barisi kodo kino for bolong blabe. Fifty six branches mola sota Gambia ja. Ha? Ha. Gambia kono aning Gambia banta la bankol. Unko kodo kia beret. Kodo sifa sifa for falindiro for nyadi lafta meme na kodi to koto ning kodi maro. Janom number one di nyonda. Anum fana nata anoda enterprise sota le. Bolong bolong nyindi ko domorol fana ngol fana be fira le le daddy man in domorol di fana beteat. Gambia dau da ya longa kumfa kendo sota le di. Ha eh wamu e odiat ha. Apelenda. Ni waka ni na lafta ni elen kendo le bina. Ya le buka ni na kuol la barka. Ha ya londel chosa no lo. Barka. data now even better enjoy 20% extra data on all gum cell data bundles buy 20 megabytes and get extra 4 megabytes buy 50 megabytes and get extra 10 megabytes buy 100 megabytes and get extra 20 megabytes any amount of gum cell data bundle you buy you will receive 20% extra data for free dial star 302 star data amount hash or go to your yai bottom menu and choose your data bundle now gum cell data is fast Last longer and very reliable. Gamsil Yai Borom. All right. Honey, did you remind him that the last time he sent the money, it was not enough to buy all the provisions? Oh, sorry, I forgot to tell him. Are you guys talking about money transfer to buy provisions? Yes. yes. But don't you know about Baluo? 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 What is Baluo? Baluo is a service that your son can use to send provisions directly to you guys from the shop and you don't have to worry about the exchange rate. Tell me how Baluo works. It's very simple. Just log on to baluo.com and shop or download the app on your phone. You can shop on the website or using the app to buy online basic products for your family and friends. With Baluo, you decide what your money is spent on. Your money, your choice. Buy online products for your family and friends in the Gambia Senegal, Nigeria or Mali. Baluo, better than sending money. For the first time in the history of the Gambia, Gambia Printing Publishing Corporation proudly introduces the Biliomatic Exercise Book Printing Machine. The machine has the capacity to print more than 20,000 books per hour. Yes, 20,000 books per hour. It also prints magazines, newspapers, calendars, flyers, normal books and all kinds of printed documents plus items at affordable prices. With the Bilomatic printing machine, GPPC can now render high quality and non-size restricted printing service supply across the sub-region. Rush now and partner with GPPC for all your public and private printing service needs. Print with us today and you'd be offered highly professional, reliable and efficient service delivery by our team of experts. The Gambia Printing and Publishing Corporation is here to meet all demands and is reliable at all times. For more info, contact us on 437-4493 or 437-4402. GPPC is Gambian and it's yours. And welcome to the brunch on Kerfatu Live. I'm Lamin Cham. This is our look at the weekly current affairs in the country. This week, we bring you updates on the preparations for the local government elections from the APRC Babili Mansa, 
The governing National People's Party, which is still grappling with the selection process of uh, chairman and mayor candidates across the country. We'll also do sports because the Gambia has reached another milestone. The country has qualified for the Af oh, sorry, World Under-20 Football Championship in the ongoing African Championship in Egypt. We will also tell you about the African Workers Sports Federation are coming to the Gambia this weekend to take part in the African Workers Championship. But with only two days before the competition starts, the organizers are grappling with logistical nightmares. We will have the president of the National Association to tell us more about that. Now, we go to the local government elections. Um, the councillors' elections is slated for April the 15th, and the nominations for councillors will be later this month. The chairmanship and mayor elections is are scheduled for the 28th May, and up to now, or even now, there are a lot of talking points about the elections process. All the parties are busy putting up candidates, the United Democratic Party, have already announced their candidates for that election. The governing National People's Party are yet to announce candidates for the that election, but they have done um, theirs for the councillors. The party's um, head for strategy, Kemo Konde, uh, is with us now. Um, he will update us with uh, what is going on in the party. And the APRC family members, that is the other faction of the APRC, are already busy also. They say they're going to put up candidates in almost all the seats across the country. With me in the studio uh, to tell us more about that is Pamo Dumbao. He is the spokesman for the group. Pamo, welcome to the branch. Oh, thank you very much. Auzu billahi min ash-shaitanir rajim. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Lamin uh, and the Kerfa to viewership. Um, thank you for the invite once again. Uh, this is my house. That's my coffee. That's my water. I already had my uh, kurasa, so yes. That's the <laughs> thank thank you very much. That's the bronze for us. This is all good. Good. Well, um, we have weeks <coughs> as far as councillors are concerned and a couple of months for the mayorship election. Let me ask you, um, apart from celebrations marking victory celebrations uh, which we saw your party exercising your muscles in in very huge assemblies we want to know exactly what are your preparations for the council and mayor elections example uh, can we know which areas in this country are you going to put up candidates uh, Lamin, thank you very much for that uh, brilliant question. Um, and before I answer it, I would like to uh, send my greetings, my salam to my party leader, His Excellency, Sir Professor Dr. Al Haji Yahya Abdul Aziz James Jumbun Jame, Babili Mansa. And I state the miracle, I add the miracle to it mm -hmm. uh, with Honorable Yaya Tamba, you know, the, the entire executive and the militants of the dynamic party. I, I take it that Jamme will watch this uh, program. Well, I tell, I told you, you before. You will share it. Jamme, Jamme, Jamme knows everything that is going on in, 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 Jamme, in this country. Okay. So. If he is watching, <laughs> hello, Mr. President. <laughs> okay, we go ahead. Right. Uh, I mean, just like you know, you you publish in the standard newspaper mm -hmm. that um, uh, our uh, interim leader, mm -hmm. Honorable Yaya Tamba, said mm -hmm. that you know we're going to be contesting in all the seats mm -hmm. that are available here in the country. The only place that we are not going to contest is where they are, they are the, the, the 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 residents of that that very particular area. They don't put up a candidate. Oh, I see. So you, the, your group is intending to put up candidates everywhere, everywhere, because except we, where perhaps your supporters feel that okay, maybe you don't. No, because it's their responsibility. Or it's their. I mean, you, you, uh, the exec is not the executive responsibility to pick and choose who to contest, if whether it's a mayor or a chairman or a councillor. So you mean your even president your structures do on that. the ground. Uh, Our structures is uh, the policy is you know from the. Um, um, out bottom up approach. Okay. The people themselves have to pick, select their, 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 their candidate, and they will recommend it to us. You know, so we vet them at the executive level, whereby you know they will be um, they will be able to meet the criteria of the IEC. You know, to be able to contest. So, if, for instance, you know, 
Bakote, Bakote world, you know, the, the people of Bakote don't have a candidate, really. So obviously, we are not going to tell them, oh, pick Pam Odumbo or pick Suleiman Fai. You understand what I'm saying? We, we don't have that mandate. We don't, we don't do that. Okay. Because even President Jamie is not doing that. Okay. So, so should this we, is sort of, but, or, but otherwise, but we are going to contest in every seat. Let's countrywide. Let's let's seven at, regions. Let's look at the practicality, the practicability of that. Because mm -hmm. even the governing NPP mm -hmm. uh, and maybe much endowed political parties, so to speak, mm -hmm. will struggle to put up candidates everywhere. Now, how can you tell me that APRC Babel Mansa would be able to put up candidates everywhere? Well, because maybe those parties that you made mention, they are not as big as us, APRC Babel Mansa. We are that big. We are that big. Our, 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 our supporters are everywhere in this country. Everywhere. And we are tapping them. You and know, then, then, then they, they are with us. Uh, as a matter of fact, at this very minute, you know, we are celebrating, you know, the victory of Ami, uh, Honorable Anami Koli in Somita. Exactly. Hi, guys. You know, my heart and soul is there, but, you know, I have to do my job. Absolutely. I'm here at the branch. So, with this man, you know, Let captain, me ask the kidnapping me. Let me ask the obvious question, then. Mm -hmm. Where will the money come from for all that? Well, to tell you the truth, um, just like we did in the National Assembly elections, we create the funds ourselves. We raise the funds ourselves. We don't rely on nobody. We don't even rely on Babili Mansa. We don't. He haven't even given us a dime since we came from uh, on the 15th of October to 2021. Mm. We raise the funds because it's our responsibility. Good. We are a party. We don't rely on people because, I mean, just like the Wolof says, Kula Abal Bud Nenga Hall. Exactly. So really, you know, we, we fund ourselves. We do our fundraisings, you know, in different areas and, you know, we raise the fund and we support our, our, our candidates. And the candidates as well, they put in their own monies as well because knowing the fact that, you know, it, it, it is their people, you know, who, who identify them. And those people will support them as well in the process of their campaign. Good. So really, um, uh, we found ourselves good uh, you know people wanted to know since the breakup people are really interested to know who really carries the majority of aprc supporters no but is it is it the fabakari tomong uh, uh, side or the yaya tamba camp loyal to jammy and the parliamentary elections have shown in some way that um well at least in the phony areas um, your part, your group certainly enjoys the biggest support. But this local government elections is again uh, going to be a barometer where people will gauge, uh, I mean, the, 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 the disparity between the two parties in terms of numbers. If you say you are going to contest all over, Fabakari Tombong's party, in alliance with the NPP, are not putting up uh, mayor or chairmanship candidates. In fact, throughout because the Because they are restricted. <laughs> well, 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 they, they say they are in alliance. <laughs> All right. Uh, and they are even going to contest the local government. The local council, they are only given 19 councillors mm -hmm. to contest. Mm -hmm. Some of these councillors may be areas that you might contest. Um, are you saying that this election coming also is another barometer to prove that you have the majority of the, of the APRC supporters? Well, I mean, I, and honestly, if I knew that you were going to ask me this question, I will come with my five-year-old grandson. He and will answer, answer that. The question, because it's honestly, obvious. it's very obvious. obvious. Mm. It's very obvious. Okay. You know, they only have the papers to go and you know um, how to call it blindfold President Baro. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That's they only have got the stamp and the papers of the party. They don't got the. They don't have the crowd. Fabakari people, APRC made Fabakari. So do you think by giving Fabakari them Fabakari was made by APRC. Do you think by, by, by giving them Fabakari only? doesn't own APRC. But Fabakari don't have any kind of dynamism. Okay. It was APRC that made him. Good. Now do you think by giving them only 19 cancellorship, you call them you call it restricting them. They are, they are restricted. Even, even the, the, the NPP, they want to contest the in Banjul, but now, they are restricted. The NPP now knows that these people have only this time, they don't have the people. Of course, they don't. And it's a fact. I mean, don't do, let's not indulge ourselves in um, deceptive politics. Mm -hmm. We have young people, we have our grandkids who are here, they're looking up to us. I mean, every single thing that you know we are doing on whether it's social media or not, print or electronic, you know, it's, it's going to be here for a lifetime. We have to leave legacy, not deceptive politics. 
That's where you, that's not that's nobody's interested in that. Okay, let's they talk can't about, fool nobody. Let's talk about it. You go to look, look at the entourage that just went to Somita. Yeah, we'll see. Do you genuinely think that you know that <laughs> that is not even um the the one sixty fourth of our crowd? Okay. It's not. Good. Let's let's talk about the uh, in, in the KM in uh, which you said everywhere, but let me look at your preparation for Banyul. Do you, do you think you actually have a candidate for Banyul? We, we are going to have a candidate in Banyul. We are going to contest in KM. We are going to contest in Birkama. And probably in CRR or the, 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 the other regions. The, the chairmen. We are ready to do that. because We are just vetting them. We are, we, are, we are doing the consultation. Right now we are in a victory, victory celebration mode. Which when people so are in a victory mode. <laughs> well, exactly. Because we, are, are, we have the confidence. We, because we got the numbers. We are not worried about that. Okay, let's talk about that. People, let other people who doesn't have uh, um, uh, uh, candidates or militants, you know, worry about you know the election. We don't worry because we know we are going to make a huge impact, big difference, let's and we are going to control the narrative. Let's talk about two places that you are present, that mm -hmm. everybody can feel your presence mm -hmm. in real times. Okay, you talk about Ciara, you talk about Banjul, but then it is in KM that in West Coast that many people think you actually may have. Uh, actual presence, particularly West Coast. Mm -hmm. In the KM, in the last elections, when the APRC was intact, mm -hmm. the candidate that comes um, behind the eventual winner, Talib Ben Suda, scored 19,000 votes. Mm -hmm. Now, that was APRC, like I said, when they were intact. Now, these 19,000 votes, which could now be, let's say, be increased because of the uh, new voters to, let's say, a couple of uh, thousands more. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is where people think. Um, if you put up a candidate in KM, he's going to contest against NPP's Bakari Badge. Right? Bakari Badge is for NPP? Of NPP. course. NPP. NPP oh, okay. for Bakari Badge. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Back by the other faction of the APRC. Mm -hmm. How much people would like to know can Bakari take mm -hmm. from this 19 or 1,000 that supported Rambo Jata in, in the last election? Well, ba Bakari was in that election. Yes. When, when Rambo came second. Independent. When Rambo came second, yes, Bakari was, was there contesting. It was a distant fort, I believe, or third. There you go. So it, it never hinders the, AP, the APRC. Mm. So him now be for, for NPP or whatever P that he may belong to, yeah. that doesn't even bother us. Really, we are not concentrating in anybody's politics. We don't do dirty politics. We do decent politics. We go and talk to the people. We tell them the truth. We tell them what is there on the table, what, what can benefit them, because that's what we have been doing all the while. So if they choose to go anywhere else, so be it. But the, the genuine people who think, who rationalize, who knows the facts, they want to be with us. And is they it, are calling us, you know, to, is to it do true? it is the it best true? way that we know we can. Is it true that you people have in mind former tourism minister Benjamin Roberts uh, as a candidate for that area. Is it true? He's on the for, grape for, for, for KM. KM. He's on the grape well, line. well, he might. He, he, he might. He might. It might be another another person. But at this, at this very so we much, we haven't had you inviting open uh, opening appli applications. What process are you doing now? We have like the no, other part that, that, we had that process will come. Right now, we are in a celebration mode. But you have only fifteen days before <laughs> nomination. Well, of course, the celebration, celebration is on. It's on right now. When orders are it's in the yes, Well, the orders have a problem with people. That's why they have to start early. We don't. We have to sleep and take our time and make sure that, yes, whenever we come out, people are coming. Whenever we call them, hello, they will run to us. They will come. Because they know they are coming to the right direction. And APRC Babili Manza is on the move. We are not stopping. We have no intention of doing so either. Let's talk about we can't West stop. Coast. Because West Coast, um, that is one area where... Especially in the Fonies, mm -hmm. it's about 35, between 35 to 40 percent of the voters in, in, in West Coast lives in Fonies. Mm -hmm. Now your party, your group overwhelmingly won that area, I mean five seats clearly, out of um, I think nine or eleven constituencies in, in, in the West Coast. That means a large chunk right. of the constituencies, even though of course they are disproportionate in terms of size, mm -hmm. went to your party. People are interested to know whether you will actually put up a candidate there to tap those ones or maybe even consolidate them or are you going to leave it out to for npp and udp to fight over them well, i mean you made the publication that aprc is going to contest in every part of this country mm. so, so the last place dac is no exception i see it's no exception 
Well, con considering what the, 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 pre the preamble that you just before your question, the preamble that you just gave, yeah. <laughs> well, that that so at least give us the confidence to if no, if we don't con con uh, compete in any other. Um, uh, mayor, mayoral or whatever, West Coast the West Coast should be, that, that should, should be well, of course, natural, because we yeah. control the narratives exactly. there, oh, so yeah, obviously yeah. that's very obvious, ah, okay. you know, we are going to, I mean, we are not looking in anybody's eyes, mm -hmm. we are not, okay. we are not afraid of nothing and nobody apart from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are not doing offending nobody, we are just doing a decent politics. Do you, what do you think tend to rumors that um, of late uh, people seem to uh, notice a rapprochement between your party and the UDP, your, 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 your bitter rivals in the past. Mm -hmm. People suspected there's a rapprochement between you. Are you, oh. do you, are you seeing, are you people, people seeing, seeing each other behind the scenes to form a no, no, uh, no, 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 secret no, no. Uh, agenda? No, uh, because no, you have no, a common enemy. No, in the no, 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 no. Well, well, okay. You can say that we have a, a common enemy, our common, common enemy is NDP. Yeah. So apart from that, you know, we, we have nothing in common with UDP. Mm. You know, but socially, mm. we will socialize. Okay. Of course. Because I might have an auntie who is UDP. Yeah. Do I have to f have just because you know we have different political or, parties? Or even of course no. Yeah. Of course no. Oh, okay. So we don't do that. Socially, yeah. we will socialize. Mm. But politically, mm. we are different, and we will we continue to stay that. We continue to run our path parallelly, mm. not in the same in the same vein because our our, our um, policies are different. Mm. Our mode of operandi is different. Okay. So we can't have any a kind of alliance with them. The one that we know we can have alliance with is the p party that came from APRC. That's GDC. Okay. Well, we, obviously yeah, we, we an had an alliance yeah, in the presidency in 2021. Okay. So we had no problem with doing that because the, the, the party leader was a national assembly member for, for two, two consecutive for two terms, terms. Yes, yes. beating even the current president. Yeah, I don't remember. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, I'm so obviously it's okay to have an alliance with that, per with that, with that, with that uh, party. Yeah. But apart from that, no, we have no, you know, same kind of policies or principles mm -hmm. or mode of op uh, operations mm -hmm. to, 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 to come into alliance with a party like UDP or NPP or, do you understand what I'm saying, or PDYS, mm -hmm. because our philosophies and our principles are different. So you can't have a, a mutual um, um, relationship. Mm -hmm. Uh, li like you're seeing right now, it's happening with other parties who have their coalition, and it's, you know it's it's going haywire <laughs> yeah. because they, it's not compatible. It's not compatible. It's not compatible. If, if it is not compatible, it's not. You don't. You don't, You can't put a, 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 a square square peg in a round hole. You can't do that. You have to chip the sides. Okay. Let's let's go back to uh, you mentioned. Uh, I mean, in an interview, yeah, yeah uh, I mean, accepted that there were actually where there are intentions. Or steps to reunite the APRC. Uh, your group, uh, you know, blamed uh, Fabakari Tombong and the IEC for frustrating those steps. But obviously, was there any concrete intention or even steps to reunite? The party? Like I just said earlier on, that we do decent politics. We don't do dirty politics. So if you want to do decent politics, now there, there is um, a, a, um, an impasse going on. Now, if there is an impasse, it's supposed to be the, the um, TOR, the mandate of the IEC, independent, it's supposed to be independent electoral commission. Because the, the IEC. So guessing they are not independent. They are not independent. <laughs> well, okay. that's what they saw us. Okay. Because when PP has the, had the impasse. NCP, the, yes. PPP force. Okay, PPP, yes, of course there was PPP, yes. They had it in Congress. They came and, you know, they mediated, you know, and they brought peace. Yes. Same with NPP, NCP. NCP, yes. So why not APRC? Why not? Especially when we go to the extent of writing to you, send you email, write you. I myself, I went to IEC to drop those letters to the Inspector General of Police to the Interparty Committee. So we were doing, we did the writing. After two weeks without getting any response, we wrote to them again to remind them that, hey guys, listen, there is an impasse going on. Are you guys happy with this? Or do you want to see us come together? Okay, let's go back to this. But uh, because the background has been that when the PPP came back, well, the PPP had always been here, but when the, all their exile members and everybody came back, they could not agree on a single consensus leadership. Mm -hmm. They agreed to have a Congress. Mm -hmm. They had a Congress. The National Convention Party to also, they had a rival leadership. 
they agreed to have the IEC actually in that matter. I think that is more pertinent to your question because the IEC actually directed. There you go. Either you come together and have a single Thank Congress. Thank you very or much. That's true. Thank you. You Larry. said that the same rule could have been applied. Absolutely. In the case because of the they are they are supposed to be independent. Right. That's the I. Okay. All right. They're supposed to be independent. Yeah. If they are not independent, they are they are they are, they are partial. Hmm. And if they are partial, they are not credible anymore. Good. Now, uh, we will come to that, but... Just for that alone, they should resign. All of them should resign, including my, my old uh, grandfather. Ah, the uh, chairman. Uh -huh. uh, Mamun, uh, so now, uh, we will go now to... Uh, we will come, of course, to have your party or your personal views on the matters surrounding the local government elections. For example, it may not have really any bearing on your country, but then there are issues like uh, the KMC, CEO, Mayor Saga, mm -hmm. uh, the Presidential Commission of Enquiry, uh, and, and the UDP's opposition, and many people's views that uh, the timing of the council is a witch hunt, or, or maybe there is a need for probity in the way funds are raised, mm -hmm. or maybe some others said that the process is selective. We'll come to have your views on that and many other uh, matters there. Now we'll cross over um, to the uh, governing National People's Party. Kemo Konde, who is the uh, Secretary of Political Research Strategy of the party, uh, that is the strat I mean, political you know, research strategy and development of the party, Kemo, also an executive member, is with us in the studio. Kemo, yes. let us update ourselves, because um, the last time we heard about your preparations, you had postponed as, you know, a planned selection process scheduled for the 19th February for the mayors. You had completed your councillor selection across the country and, and you have now officially it has been said that your selection for councillor, rather mayors and chairperson will be on the 8th March Wednesday. Can you update us now when are you going to have your candidates known for mayor and for uh, chairman? Uh, <clears throat> thank you very much, uh, Larry. Uh, first of all, let me say it's a great pleasure. Thank you. And I'm highly honored to be here representing uh, my party, the National People's Party, in this uh, crucial discussion uh, where we will be updating the Gambian public on the uh, Preparations uh, in the run up to the selection of uh, candidates for mayors and chairpersons of councils, and also give a brief rundown of the uh, selection uh, status of the uh, ward councillors that have already been done back, in, uh, back on Tuesday, February 7th. 2023. Mm -hmm. um, as you said, the discussions have been concluded at the level of the national executive. Okay. And we are now going to embark on a nationwide selection process of uh, mayors and chairpersons of councils. Because the councils have all uh, councillors Ca have already been done. The councillors have already been done. Yes, okay. board councillors have been done. So now it's the chairman and, 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 and yeah, mayor. The board councillors were done on the 7th of February. February, okay. Uh, How many councillors do you put? Do you put up councillors all over the country, or there are a few that you you, you allowed your ally, your allies in APRC uh, to contest? Yes, there are a few places, uh, mm, mainly in the West Coast region and uh, Sierra North. Oh, Sierra North, could that be NRP? Or? NRP, exactly. okay. yes. Yeah. So in those places, um, our allied parties, APRC, mm -hmm. in the uh, West Coast region, mm -hmm. um, are filing in um, 12 candidates, mm -hmm. and NRP in Sierra North are filing in three candidates. Oh, so NRP uh, has, uh, across the country, NRP has only three councillors? As far as we know, yes. Okay, uh, yeah. and APRC, uh, in the West Coast region, they have seven, is it? Uh, twelve. Twelve? Yes. They have twelve? Yes. Ah, okay. Any other place where you have your allies contested? Uh, Those are the only... Yes, in, in the KM, yeah. uh, APRC is filing in five candidates. 
five categories yes. out of uh, out of 19 out, is it? out of 19 yes. so basically it's 19 altogether for APRC uh, NRP 3 yes. all right so the, the remainder is going to be contested by the NPP okay you you still with the councillors I mean you know of course the issue about the PPP um, you 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 they felt that they have been left out and they're going on their own you did not mention GDP, GPDP and um, um, uh, how to call the other parties in the in the alliance um, they've not been included um, or given allocations or quotas in the in the area council elections well the decision to put up candidates uh, of allied parties is really the decision of the allied parties themselves uh, it's, so not, it's not for NPP to ask uh, GPDP or any of the other allied the NCP. parties uh, NCP mm -hmm. to uh, come up with a decision to place a candidate anywhere but mm -hmm. if they choose to mm -hmm. Uh, they know that uh, the doors are open for... But the PPP wanted to do that and they were not, uh, <laughs> they were not, they were not even mentioned in the press release uh, that you gave out allocated to us. The PPP wanted to very badly, they wanted to. Uh, well, yes, there was some discussion with PPP, mm. but I think in the end it was uh, PPP's decision to go their own way, their own and, way. and put up their so you mean so the, you, could not, you could not agree with them um, because they wanted areas allocated to them. You, you I mean, you, they said you, they were here. They said your party said, well, the policy is that uh, you, you know you're going to give ways to only incumbent councillors. So if there is an incumbency in Bunu elsewhere and that's APRC, you are going to leave that with the APRC. Yeah. If there is an incumbent for NRP. You're going to leave that for NP, NP. Yeah. But the, their argument is there's no incumbent or very, very few incumbents for NPP. Yet you, you, you contested all areas. When it comes to local council elections, you are not better than them. You have only two councillors. Mm. You have no incumbent anywhere. Why did, why did you say that it's only incumbents? And they have incumbents probably somewhere. They said you are not better than them. So that criteria is discriminating. You no, know, this principle of incumbency, of course, uh, it was a major factor in the negotiation process, but it wasn't uh, a be all and all. I mean, uh, various other uh, considerations are. Uh, we are put we're into, put into, into yeah, were made and so. But at the end of the day, it was. Uh, so you mean it was PVP is going solo their own decision? Yes, I mean they felt it was the best course of action for them, for them. given the circumstances. Not uh, because you didn't want to give them any allowance to contest the area that they feel they have support. No, it was not for us to give them allowance or not give them allowance. It was for them to calculate where they felt their, uh, their interest uh, was best served and they took that course of action. Okay, let's move on to the, um, to the... So you have done tremendously well in terms of a selection in the, in the councillors. You have covered that very amicably, it looks like. Well, yes, we have... But it doesn't seem to be so in the process so far of the chairmanship. Uh, how, how, uh, why do you have to plan, uh, postpone? Is that not because of um, chaotic nature of the thing, so controversial issues? that you cannot handle, that you have to have time to Or was it that the process is cumbersome and you have taken your time to do it well? Well, I mean, I think you will agree with me, political decision making can be complex. Yes, that's true. Uh, sometimes, especially uh, when it's about <coughs> selection of uh, candidates, there yeah. are always uh, uh, interests and counter interests and this has to be mm -hmm. negotiated and sometimes it can can uh, take time okay so uh, it was an ongoing process of uh, uh, discussion but you couldn't meet it on February 19 um, because there were issues not yet right? yes indeed but now the most uh, definitely it will be on Wednesday on, definitely on March 8 definitely inshallah uh, on March 8 Wednesday next, next Wednesday yeah NPP will put out a news release mm -hmm. uh, with a list and of announcing the candidates announcing the candidates if so i mean if anyone is uh, uh interested to follow that up you can follow the news otherwise you can uh check with uh, our party what we've discovered that since the postponement even the aspirants themselves told us that they did not even know why it was postponed and they didn't even know the next step the process will take so like the public they too stakeholders primary stakeholders didn't even know what is the next process they told us that 
Why, why would it the, the executive will find it necessary to, 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 to keep all the process, to, you know, all the things to their chest without telling even the aspirants who are the primary stakeholders what the next step will be? No, there are two levels of executives in this. You have the regional executive and the national executive. That's right. So if there is information that should have been flowing mm -hmm. from the regional executive to, the, uh, to the stakeholders. Uh, stakeholders at the regional level, yeah. uh, that had absolutely uh, no bearing okay. on the on the decision making process at the national uh, national level. Okay. I mean, this that has to do with their own regional processes and complexities and uh, uh, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't know exactly what what uh, so what format then will it take I mean we know okay the United Democratic Party for example they declared that they're not going to be primaries they are going to maintain their uh, incumbents which many criticized to be undemocratic even though they said it is actually those regional uh, members of their party who accepted that uh, but people expected that you're gonna you forget, you're gonna have primaries. Oh yes. So um, people want to know what the process will be. Is it that these people? Because you're gonna do it simultaneously at all the regions, isn't it? Is yes. it gonna be done by your regional committees, or the ex national executive will have any input on the decision as to who become the eventual candidate? Except uh, Banjul, where there is no competition uh, for the position of mayor as far as NPP is concerned. Only one applied. That, that was, uh, we, we received only one, one, applicant. one applicant. So uh, for that Banjul, is, that is Ibu Fai. That's Ibu Fai. So they, uh, is there a contest in came? You are, you uh, no, not Ibu Fai, uh, Oswada. That's, that's Oswada. No, Oswada is no, the Sorry, sorry, Ibu Fai, exactly, yeah. yeah. So it's Ibu Fai. Ibu Fai, yeah, exactly. So there is no contest there because only one person applied. There is only one person that applied and uh, so that, but, will, but be, it, but that will, will be a meeting on Wednesday to confirm in Banjul to formalize his, Ibu uh, his, uh, oh. yeah, Ibu Fai's uh, selection. Okay. What about Kem? Apart from that, in all the other um, regions, there will be contest. There will be, there will be Process. processes, Process. uh, there will be a process of uh, uh, primaries. Kim, are you suggesting that KM is not done and done because done and dusted? Bakari Bagi is telling people that he is the candidate. Not at all. I mean, there are eight, uh, eight contestants eight, in, eight in KM. Eight applicants uh, in received KM. In, in KM. So when Bakari said he is the contestant, people said he is handpicked by your executive or President Barrow. He said it is going to be the candidate. Are you telling me that there is going to be primaries there? Well, it, it depends really how uh, everything, you know, um, unfolds on, on Wednesday. Mm. Um, Bakari is uh, uh, he's going round and see door to door, um, telling people that he's the candidate. If you are now telling, well, he, he's not. He's not the only one who is going round. I mean, but he declared that he will be the candidate. Well, you see, every other candidate who um, who is aspiring would say they are. No, who will go to um, to your to your electorates and tell I them I will not be. <laughs> I will not be the candidate. Ah, okay. So you, he was just propaganda. <laughs> well. I don't know. I mean, I mean, he's he's interested. Oh, only that people, many people seem to conclude, even inside and outside NPP, that he is the handpicked candidate. Maybe that's good for him. <laughs> <laughs> then let's go to Kim. Um, the last time we checked, nine people were in that list, aspirant list for the NPP. Yeah, nine, nine or maybe reduced to eight. Uh, we had yes. one candidate total somehow. Yeah, yes, now it's eight. Eight. Mm. Eight of them. Yes. That, that you seem to have a, or in fact there are regions with even higher aspirants. Yes, it? I mean small region like uh, CRR North. How many are there? CRR North uh, ten. Ten CRR yeah, North. Ten that applicants. is that uh, Kuntaur or Janjambari? Kuntaur. Kuntaur. Yes. Ten aspirants. Yes, and uh, we had twelve um, applicants in Lower River mm. region. Ah, the Mansakong area. Mansakong. Unfortunately, mm. one of them. Passed Died. away, passed away. We yes. heard about this. Twelve, twelve mm -hmm. people went to contest. Yes, um, one and of them withdrew. Re recently, recently we were and one died. We were informed that uh, one one of them had withdrawn. So, but initially there was uh, twelve. Twelve. Staff. One withdrew. One unfortunately passed away. Passed away. Yes. So you have ten people to select from. Yes. And then what about uh, you said CRR Kuntaur, which is very ten. small. Ten. 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 What about the Janjambre area? Janjambure, that will be Sierra South. Sierra South, that will be nine. Nine? Nine, nine applicants, yes. What about Basse? Basse will be URR uh, 12. 
12. 12 aspirants, yes. 12 aspirants today. Yes. So this means, of course, you have a big job in your hands. Yes, indeed. That's why everybody's keen to know what will be your process like. Is it going to be regional uh, committees, your regional committees who are going to do the final selection? And if they're going to do that, where there is no consensus, what will follow? Because we ask even the candidates, aspirants, they, don't, they cannot tell us that. They said they've been not been told. Well, um, a selection committee has been set up in each of the regions, regions. Okay. comprising of the constituency and uh, uh, regional executive members okay. so of, the, of, the, of, of, of the of the region, of each region. Of each region. And, then? and uh, this uh, selection committee will be uh, will be supported mm -hmm. by a selected number of people from the national executive. Okay. Yeah, okay. But um, the selection will be done by the regional executive committees. The national members of the national executive committee uh, will be on the ground mm -hmm. just to observe and guide and give support where it is necessary. But the decision it's will be made at the regional level. Now, we have heard of, uh, well, this could happen. There, 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 are, there are candidates, aspirants for the NPP ticket who have come out to say, well, you know, it's either them or, 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 or they, will, they will break away. They will break, break, break away to, to contest uh, independent. This can happen in any big party, I, of course, I know. But where did this happen? What will be the approach of the party? Are you, uh, are you still will be interested? If you, where you don't succeed in forming a single united platform, uh, what are you going to approach that? How well, are you going to approach we, that? We haven't reached there yet. Mm -hmm. And I suppose we will cross the bridge when we but, get there. But you, you, can't, you cannot discount the fact that there are signals, uh, you know, leading, uh, signals of such a scenario. Yeah, but in any case, the party will always come to a decision uh, uh, under any circumstances. Mm -hmm. And once the party decision has been made, and established that is what the party will do so so, so, so you, at this point even at this point you you're not disturbed about uh, innuendos and rumors of um, a potential break uh, a potential split uh, you know when a consensus is not reached in these regions no not at for all for example Basse and KM, uh, Basse and, um, and West Coast seem to be the potential um, risk areas for your party. Like, uh, there is a Peter and Pate uh, in Basse, among the 12 or are they 12 or so. Yeah. Uh, I know a <coughs> Peter and a Pate who are the top contenders. And uh, none is actually willing, according to our sources, to leave it for the other. Well, I, no, like, as I said, I mean, in any uh, situation, mm. the party will look at um, the circumstances and take a party decision and that will be the party's line of action. So again, the regional... The regional yeah, you see, um, we have to understand, I mean, um, no one individual member of the party will be more... Uh, uh, will be more powerful, if I can put it that way, than the party as a whole. I mean, if the party executive decides a, a line of action, mm -hmm. any member of the party that decides to fall outside of that line of action, well, um, it will be their decision, but not the decision of the party. Mm. Now, I mean, of course, the party, and I mean the executive, will of course have to, if whether directly or remotely, monitor this process very well. Exactly. exactly. That is why. That now, is, where, that where? is why, as I said, they will be the there. national executive members will be, will be represented in each region uh, at, the at, the, at the election process, Selec monitor. selection process. Yeah. To monitor, to guide. But but you said categorically they will have no input. No no no. No input. Apart yes. from apart from you know giving support and guidance where it is needed. The, could that support and guidance be in favor of one candidate or the other? No no no. Certainly not. That will be, of course, that will be, um, that will be principles, that will be uh, guidelines to guide members of the national executive uh, themselves on how they will conduct their work on the ground. I mean, nobody, no party will advise 
representatives, its representatives on the ground to go and openly side with uh, individual candidates. Now, here is a scenario. There will be candidates who will obviously, or are aspirants, who will not be the, the, the choice of the uh, executive committee, but they, they could be the most popular on the ground among the party supporters, grassroots supporters. For example, Lamin Jam may not have enjoyed a lot of support in the regional executive, you know, who are the decision makers, according to you. But Lamin Jam may be very popular among the grassroots in that area. If that has come to the knowledge of the NEC, that's the National Executive Committee, who are monitoring, don't they, the National Executive Committee, have the last card, the power, the veto power, so to speak? I mean, to, 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 to veto the regional committee's decision in the interest of the party, knowing that fully, yes, this man may not be the choice of the regional committee, but he is far more popular uh, on, you know, in, the, in the grassroots, at the grassroots level for the party. Don't the NEC have that uh, veto power? No, you see, uh, we, we have to put it this way. There will be two levels of executive committees involved in the selection You process. said constituency and regional. The constituency pro uh, committee will be there. But most of these regional uh, constituency committees also are regional committees. Yeah, but there, is, but, there are, yeah, but there are still two levels of executive committees. Mm. So if a candidate shows up who uh, seems to be uh, popular mm. with the grassroots, with the grassroots yeah. uh, one would expect that such a candidate will have you know, Equal support, support in, at in, the in, level in, of the executive. Uh, uh, okay, okay. Because it will be, I think it will, it will feel odd yeah. that you are claiming support on, on the, at the grassroots, mm. yet the people who represent the grassroots don't recognize you. Mm. You mean don't the, support you, mean, you. That's not likely. That, I think that's very unlikely. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now let's let's come to this. Uh, the the chances of your party in all these regions, given that most of them are held now by the UDP. Of course, we have. We cannot forget the fact that we, uh, at the last election, your party and the UDP are one and the same. But now, now that this party, these regions are controlled by the opposition. How are your chances of ripping out of getting these things from them? One by one. Yeah. Are you familiar with politics in Banjul? NPP, UDP? Are we familiar with, yes. with Banjul? Yes. Yeah, of the course, ground. we know what's happening uh, in Banjul mm -hmm. on the ground. So, uh, I don't know. What, what do you want to know? What I wanted to know whether from the time of the past election to now, whether there have been any major shift from the incumbent camp, uh, support base, uh, Rohi Malik Law, um, to the NPP. Last time he contested, he beat a large field of uh, three or four candidates. Now he's facing only one, the NPP. I'm, I'm trying to say, had there been any shift since then? Five of the uh, present, I mean, councillors in KMC, out of the, in BCC. In, in BCC, excuse me, out of the nine, have already shifted. So that means that that's more than half. Yes. So that's a good indication. It's a very good indication that, that uh, NPP that is, is, that, that's, is, okay. is, is... Have already gained ground. Yes, over, over, over the UDP there. Yes. Kem, Kem, we talk about is overwhelmingly, ex, you know, the, it was, it was how to call it, um, it was Talib Ben Suda um, who beat a light field. Of course, he didn't win the, win the popular votes there. I mean, it was just a system of one force past the post. But, I mean, the combined votes against him were definitely were far greater than the one he got. But he has, he's an incumbent, he spent four years there, he's been really held, and I can say, I dare say, across party lines to have done a good job. Now, what are your chances there? I'm not sure uh, what you are saying, that he has done a good job across party lines. Well, there's I still, said, but that's there's what still a great deal of uh, questions being asked okay. uh, around Talib Ben Suda and his level of performance. Hmm. Uh, in KMC, and this is going to be vigorously contested. Mm -hmm. I can assure you that. I mean, um, there is a lot that 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 uh, we know should have been happening politically, developmentally in KMC on the Talib that has not been happening. And uh, uh, our candidate 
selected candidate, whoever it's going to be. Not Bakari. Well, you said he's not automatically Bakari. I know. I, I, I cannot which, tell you it's Bakari. Which I cannot, many people doubt. That I cannot tell Bakari. you it's Bakari mm. at this point. I mm. cannot tell you it's Bakari. Mm. I cannot tell you it will be Bakari okay. at this point. Okay. But I can tell you on Wednesday, mm -hmm. Um, put your put your ears on the news. Of course, I know always do. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you will. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What about the Kama? You, you have a different scenario. That you, uh, the, the incumbent, defected from the UDP to your party. Yes. Um, if he is not in, if he eventually, he's of course in the aspirant list. Yes. If he eventually does not get the ticket, mm -hmm. um, I, I, I mean, I mean, the, in the recent national assembly elections. NPP failed miserably. They have only one seat in the whole of that region. Yes. How do you think you can uh, regalvanize your supporters there to 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 unseat or to block uh, any UDP com comeback for the region? Yeah, but you see, um, you are referring to the national assembly elections. No, I'm trying to say we're still on the local government. I'm said you have a scenario there where. Uh, the chairman, the incumbent, defected from UDP yes. to your NPP. Yes. If he does not get your ticket. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's going to be a completely different thing. You're going to come up with a new candidate. Yes. How are you going to block UDP's coming back? Uh, I mean, because National Assembly has showed that you lost uh, almost every seat except one. If that comes up as a scenario... And you know that is where the APRC Babylon Mansa is. They have five constituencies. I mean, you, you seem to have a, a very big job, a bigger job in your hands there. Yeah, but I'm saying if that comes up as a scenario, I can assure you our politicians are on the ground mm. and they know what to do and they know exactly uh, what were the internal issues and, 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 and frictions we had within the party that made it difficult for us to um, uh, get the level of uh, winning that we desired at the, at the National National Assembly elections. We have learned lessons from that and this party is moving on. Finally, let's go to both of you. Uh, there have been criticisms about the timing of the local government councils while well, I'm running out of time. Very quickly, um, people have the opinion that it's a witch hunt. Do you agree or not agree? This, you have to be very short No, but how, how, how can it be uh, a witch hunt? I mean, if it is about the, the uh, establishment of the Commission of Inquiry on the councils, that is, that is no time... Uh, frame prescribed in the constitution for the establishment of commissions of inquiry. I mean, I will tell you, UDP is the single greatest uh, obstruction of democracy and political clear thinking in this country. In which way? Well, you see, UDP uh, is embarked on a process of manipulating the cognitive uh, processes of people's thinking than knowing their uh, remembering and judging of things. Yeah. I mean, take for example, uh, look at uh, look at Talib, for example. Mayor of KM. Mayor of KM reading uh, an Independence Day address mm -hmm. to uh, he was saying the people of uh, KMC. Yes. Which, in fact, really, uh, if you say KMC, he meant, I, I know he meant the people of Carnivy Municipality. Yes, whatever but way. But KMC is Carnivy Municipal Council. Yeah, but he meant. No, but that, 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 I mean, when I you mean, say Carnivy Municipal but Council. But you know, actually, he's referring to the people who live Yeah, but there. I mean, he is the mayor. Yes. He is supposed to know what he is supposed to say. I mean, he the, say. how he said it, you know that he's referring to the people. Of, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, 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 them yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, you yeah, said, yeah, you know, that, 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 that decision to address people. Uh, as their mayor on Independence Day is 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 really but in, but in such a in such a way as if he was uh, uh, posing as the president of the Republic of KMC. Okay. I mean, we but had we had we had we had we had we had, we had independence no. celebrations no, yourself, last year. He, was he didn't there. do that. No, but he was. We but had, he was. At, he was he not at the at the at the, at the main one at the Magadha? Yeah, he was. He was there. He was. You yourself. I'm not talking about you that. You yourself walk in the local. I'm government. not talking about you that. You know the import. No, you know the importance and the sense in devolution of powers. Talib is the mayor, is the direct president, so to speak. I'm not saying he has executive powers, but as mayor, you have the direct uh, governor, the direct um, jurisdiction of the people under you. We've seen mayors in New York and others come and address New York matters. 
No. On Independence Day or anyone else? You what see, is wrong with Talib addressing his people on Independence Day yeah. when he had gone to the okay. central one? Okay, you're talking about this timing. You what? Talk, Yo, you thought he's politicking? Of Fine. course. Okay, of course. Right. That's we, had, we had independence celebrations. Very good. Very good. We had it's wait a minute. Okay. We had independence celebrations last year. Exactly. He didn't do this. Okay, this time we, we had. Wait a minute. We had independence celebrations the year before. Last. He didn't do that. He didn't so do this it. time he did. Why is he politics? doing it now? So, so his action is not wrong, but the time is political. <laughs> so <laughs> the commission, the commission of the inquiry was saying it's no, political. No, no. See, I'm no, telling you, no, no, it's it. not. You see, that's I'm, what you say. No, 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 no. I'm not. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that yeah. we should stop associating uh, uh, actions execu executive actions and and politicizing them. Okay. Very good. That's a you good know? point. And 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 let me let me tell you something else here. Yeah. The fact that the mayor or the chairperson of a council is elected by the people does not mean that he is elected by the people to be on a on a on a on a on, a, on the same level as on the, the same level as the president but you people the, the same people that elected him yeah. or her as are the as the, the as the mayor as the mayor recognize in law that they were they were they were they were electing, electing this mayor. person I'm not the with with limited powers okay so you know the objects and reasons of uh, local government elections yeah. for a mayor yeah. is to serve as the developmental agent direct yeah, right? direct but it's not, it's not yeah but it's not as if you can uh, assume that you are the president because i am elected by the people yeah. therefore you know, I have, I have total. People. I have total power. I have total powers, and uh, you know. So you, so are you saying that the problem with the NPP, uh, the, the, the NPP's problem with Talib is equating himself to President Barak? No, it's not only Talib. Well, there has been said that he he spread red carpet for the UDP leader at the inauguration of the head head office like a president. That has been said about your party. They said it's not done. Well, so you know, so his problem is now he the NPP thought that he's equaling himself to President Barak. No, you see, I think it is uh, for Talib. Hmm. And any uh, local government uh, elected official, for that matter, okay. to to understand where their where their powers are, where where your power and your you know political so, so, influence. So you are trying to say that to say that the local government like uh, local government inquiry, the timing is wrong or is political. Is no, I'm not saying that. You you, I are, mean, the, yeah, you uh, said uh, nobody should question when an inquiry should be. Yes. And you equate it to the fact that Talib yes. used the independence anniversary this year to address his people. No, he but didn't, no, he did I'm not saying, do it last year because it's political. No, what I'm saying is, I'm that saying, are you saying the Talib, Talib found it fitting to do that? Yeah. All right. Yeah. And he didn't find it, and and none of his uh, supporters found it fitting to do it last year to criticize that. Okay. All right. All right? Yeah. But when the president, yeah. who is embarking, who is uh, decided to uh, carry out an executive function yeah. entrusted to him yeah. in the constitution, to set up a commission, to, to set up a com commission of inquiry, when he felt it necessary, uh -huh. and people are they they are they, they, are, the time is wrong. they are they are translating that as political. They are also asking why did the president also look into the CTO reports, the Banjo Rose rehabilitation, the timber trade, which has billions involved, bigger than all these resources combined from the council. You have to understand. So that that's there's no time for that yet. No, no, no. You have to understand how public policy works. So you mean no? Yeah. How the governance process works? Or they should start with councils first? No, not necessarily. Don't push me. I think you got to. If the you allow one. me, I will explain this. Okay. Why? Time. Why do you think? Yeah. He did not. The government did not look at the billions involved in the road trans and the road traffic that they wanted to query. I mean, we are talking about wanted to query. It is. It is up to the government. Ah. Wait a minute. That. It is up to the government to explain to explain that. You see, ah, you people don't understand something. You know, yeah. when when the auditor general uh, prepares their report, yeah, they submit it to the executive. Yes, and they, if they find anything uh, wanting in the financial management process of a government institution, yeah. they would normally ask for a management letter. Yes, that's I mean, all they would, they would, they, no, they would, they would, they would normally uh, transmit. All the, all, yeah, the response, minute, all that's in there. Yeah, report. they will, they will normally um, transmit their you message know. in a management letter, exactly. and the management letter is supposed to be re replied to. Yeah, so when, happened. yeah, but you see, when the government, when, for example, when you talk about the Banjul yeah. project, yeah. Now, as I, I'm using it as an example, yeah. if the authorities that conducted the Banjul project, yeah. Um, wrote 
or reply to the management letter of the of the of the of the yes uh, to the auditors they the published the auditors. all that they published that too the reply yes no, no, no. all the replies no no they have not replied they have you not did not read the report actually you no. did not read no, the report the report but the not auditor the... general replied to all it allowed okay. them all to reply it has been published everywhere all the replies from 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 the about the timber trade about the this have all been replied and they reported. But the, 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 the auditor general um, come back to say the replies were it's inadequate. It did, yes, he said if up to in many cases he said up to this time those matters are not resolved. You don't read the reports, obviously. No, of course I read but, the but reports. We, we are already out of time. Very quickly, your thoughts on the uh, local government elections? Do you think they are timely? The president is right, or as the UDP said, they are for which one? The elections or the, the local government commission of inquiry. Commission of inquiry. Yeah. Um, I would have been very comfortable to be talking about the commission of, of um, the death of Aruna Jata or the Faraba kids or the, the petroleum oh, wow. than talking about you know oh, wow. BCC and KM I for see. God's sake, which are the latest, which are the minute cases. The timber trade that you're talking about, you know, petroleum, twenty million dollars for God's sake, eight counts. Eight counts. You accuse them, no problem. And you wanna tell me you're talking about Talib? I'm not talking about Talib or any. Let them do whatever commission they like. We are in we, we know what's going on. Everybody here in this country we know what's going on. We know it. And these are these are facts. Stop playing with people's life. This politics is dirty. We are not interested. We want clean, decent politics that we can be proud of. To have, to have that legacy, our kids will be proud 10, 20 years down the line to say, yes, that's my granddad. I love him. I want to be like him. You say, are you comparing the Jammers, Jammers 22 years to? No, to the that's chalk and cheese. Are you the one preaching people now about chalk and cheese? Chalk and cheese. Mm. What do you mean? Jammer is a president. Jammer is a leader. He's legendary. You would send any of your staff to go out there and do a vox box about uh, James return or James legacy. Compare Jamie and Jabaro. No, that's chalk and cheese. You cannot compare them. Oh. Chalk and cheese, well, brother. I'm, 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 I'm tempted to ask people. Might ask, is that? Let me just send one of your reporters to go out there and ask the population. Please, Buba, because Buba, this is just me. Buba, are you watching that? You will, you will have. If this is just me. Check. Send your reporters to go out there and do Buba, a voice Buba, box box. Like the so oh, you, come according on. to you, people should be concerned about the human rights abuses of Harun and Jata. And of all course, stuff. these were the very things that they levied against on, 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 yeah. against Jame ah. about this uh, so, solo Sunday and you know the, the April 10 and 12 kids. Ah. You know it happens in Farabatu. too. Why can't we put that? Because we say never again. Kemo. And it's happening. Kemo, you said the, your, your government. I'm not interested in Taliban, whatever money. Let them eat all the money no, no, like no, no, they, everybody's government. doing. No. All right. 669 million was at right there out there in the window. Who, who, where, where was that commission? Good. Why was in commission? Right. That's right. Good. Gentlemen, Kemo no, Conde. But, but of, I important. mean, there's no time. We're going, we're going to do sports now <laughs> so that we can cool down the temperature here. Well, the Gambia, because there's a milestone, the Gambia is qualified for the under 20 World Cup. Not that we've been, we've not been there before, but uh, it's a great achievement. And also, we are hosting the African Walkers uh, Sports Championship in Banjul this weekend. Uh, perhaps that's also exciting things to look for. That's all in the brunch. But Should I don't know why you are not interested. Congratulations, yes, Team no, Gambia. Congratulations for whatever. I again, chance to reply, and we will go on and on. You have dealt with the commission. He's dealt. He's he's not interested in your commission. He's interested in another commission. So that's fair enough. We'll be back. Don't worry. Uh, Head of Strategy, NPP, spokesman for IFPRC, Babili Mansa, Pamodumbo, and Kemo Conte. Thank you very much for being Thank on the Thank you, Lame. We'll Thank be you. back next week. I appreciate it. With these people. But now. Where technology is creating a world without borders, filled with unlimited potential to improve the lives of the people around us. Innovarex Global Health ushers in a new way of leveling the playing field with increased access to quality healthcare services delivered at your doorstep. Our qualified professionals are equipped with state-of-the-art point-of-care testing technology to conduct tests such as kidney function, liver function, electrolyte tests, body composition, hemoglobin, a1C, 
and many more services with the highest efficiency in delivering results. The addition to our flagship, Wellness on Wheels, more fondly known as WOW Delivery Service, brings the entire clinical experience full circle. IGH has remained committed to creating the future of healthcare delivery. Gone are the days of sending loved ones outside the country for basic medical services. Innovarex Global Health offers a new peace of mind and takes pride in delivering the quality of care we all deserve. Islamic microfinance is becoming an increasingly popular mechanism for poverty alleviation, especially for developing countries around the world. This microfinance service adheres to the principles of Islam as a form of social responsibility. Yona Islamic Microfinance is the Islamic microfinance of choice in the Gambia, trustworthy and reliable. At Yona Islamic Microfinance, we provide savings products, current accounts, financing products in conformity with Islam. In addition, Yona Islamic Microfinance also offers local and international remittances, takaful fund, management of zakat, management of awqaf, trading and investment, and building of strategic partnerships to bring financial services to the doorstep of the poor with donor projects, madrasas, youth organizations, women groups, and farmer organizations. Make a choice with Yona Islamic Microfinance today. For more information on Yona Islamic Microfinance, call 377-2151 or 9832-151 or visit Yona Head Office at Tipa Garage, Bakote or visit any Yona branch located countrywide. <laughs> Albaka. Albaka, I'm cordon. You're not transfer. You're transfer. Code Okay. What's up? You see, the ID is Sorry. I got it. Bridan, bro. Albaka. 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 Very good for Kato. But it's a good one. Kato for 56 branches more so the Gambia. Huh? Ka. Gambia Kono and in Gambia Bantala Bangul. Unka Kono Kia Beret. Kodo Sifa Sifa for Falindiro for Nadi Lata Memena Kodi Tokoton in Kodimaro. Janum number one in Yonda. And Nun for another another enterprise is total. Golam Nintuko, Domoro Fanam Kol Fanam Bay Fira de Dadi Man in Domoro Fanam Petiat. Gambia Dauda Yalom of Fakindol Sotari. Ha, what more? Ha, a parent. I never left a yell and candle every night. Yale Bukanil of Wall, Abarka, Yalon del Chosano, Abarka. data now even better enjoy 20 percent extra data on all gum cell data bundles buy 20 megabytes and get extra 4 megabytes buy 50 megabytes and get extra 10 megabytes buy 100 megabytes and get extra 20 megabytes in the amount of gum cell data. back to the brunch well after the heated political discussions between the npp and the aprc babili Bansa, the brunch now is going to do sports because another milestone has been reached in Gambian football. The country's under-20 footballers have qualified for the World Under-20 Championship to be held in Indonesia later this year. Well, we will do justice to that uh, achievement with a discussion that I will do with uh, sportsmen in the studio here. Musa Sise is the president of the Sports Journalists Association and has just been newly elected Secretary General of the African Sports Journalists Association, the continental branch of the World Sports Journalists Association. So we begin by uh, extending our congratulations to Musa. Congratulations for you being made Secretary 
uh, the head of the Secretariat of the African Sports Journalists Association. Thank you very much, Sharon. Thank you so much. Good. Um, Sheku B. Jaju and Omudu are members of the National Intersports Department Association. Sheku is being the president. Because that national association is hosting Africa, and I mean Africa, um, the African Workers uh, Sports Association called AfriSport are holding a championship in the Gambia over the weekend. Already delegates have arrived. The whole of Africa, I mean, will be in Banjul over the weekend to compete in various disciplines. And the national association hosting them, uh, okay, the Gambian chapter of that association is NISA. They are present in the studio, Sheku Bija is the president, and Mungudu Bite also a Pamu, secretary, secretary of, of the Palai right. Bite is the secretary to the association. But even when delegates are already arriving, the body is grappling with budgetary and logistical nightmares. We will discuss exactly so far what have been achieved and what is yet to be done. Sheku and Palai Bite, welcome to the branch. Thank you very much, uh, Lamin Chams. Welcome to the viewers. Uh, uh, thank you our viewers for being here and then uh, hosting the Continental Championship Banjo 2023. Let's begin with the celebration before we go to celebrate the workers coming here. We have been <laughs> to the World Cup on the 20. We've been there back in 2007 uh, in Canada. Uh, but Musa, what has what is team have achieved a hundred percent record from the first round to the quarterfinals and never even considered a single goal come on that that really is is, is a landmark yeah i mean Cham, i mean thanks it's just um it's, it's a landmark and something that we should all take pride in uh, what the young boys were able to do in our name um and remember i mean you mentioned 227 i mean the boys were supposed to be in 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 South America last time um, in last year because they qualified for the on the 20 World Cup also. It didn't happen. It didn't happen because of COVID. COVID. Yeah. Uh, I mean, so there is something that is happening with our youth football and uh, we should all look into that very positively because it seems that that's where we tend to be making most of the bigger headways and uh, and uh, hoping and hoping and hoping um, in that um, the, the, the records that you mentioned, I mean, that these boys were able to display in, in, in Egypt really stays intact, really keeps them as an inspiration to even aim a little bit higher. Uh, the last time they finished in Dakar, they finished third. Yeah. And here they are, third is out, probably, you know, the final position is the, what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. But when you listen to Coach Abdullah Bojang and um, the targets he was able to set himself, firstly, is to qualify for the World Cup, he's achieved that. What could be the second most important thing is to win the championship. Mm -hmm. um, could he? It's possible. He has strong opponents in Nigeria and Senegal waiting in the wings. I mean, who are also who did very well in in, in this tournament because that's why they they able to come far this far. But if you look at the Gambia's performance, I watched the game yesterday against South Sudan. The scoreline could have been even a basketball. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, five not scoreline. Yeah. Because the chances that they threw away, if they were clinical enough, I mean, then it would have been, you know, I mean, something else. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, we can only commend them. We can only encourage them. We can only keep supporting them. I um, mean, to understand that it's youth football. Mm -hmm. It is youth football, and I think there is a confusion mm -hmm. uh, with followers of, of the team. And it is youth football. It is just for you to develop. And nothing yeah. else, and so far, so good. The boys have done immensely well. BJ, do you watch? You, you follow? <coughs> yeah, I watched the match not uh, live, but after. Okay. When I saw 5 nil on my uh, YouTube, and I Couldn't said, What? Wow. Is it true or not? Was it a past match some time ago? I, my child told me that no, it is today yeah, that the match happened. So I wish to con congratulate the team. They have performed, you know, outstandingly well against their opponents and uh, they have a very good chance the talents i have seen in that team is really amazing they need to harness, harness them maybe uh, make them a bit more calm on the field take chances as musa has already said that they could be more clinical in terms of finishing because if you have bigger opponents like um, nigeria, nigeria next quarter. you cannot miss a chance any chance take it and then that's perhaps will take you to the next uh, level so the target has been reached. That is a ticket to the World Cup mm -hmm. by reaching the semi-finals. They have already secured that. Mm -hmm. 
But there's still two matches to go. Perhaps we hope that there's two matches to go. <laughs> the final and the, semi, uh, the semi-final and the final. Yeah. The first one is against Nigeria. Um, yeah. uh, okay, uh, Seko, you, do you follow the football? Yes, I do follow it, uh, just like uh, Peter would tell you. Because yesterday we saw much busy uh, on our arriving uh, guests. But along the way, at night, I was able to follow the, uh, the, the whole man. Mm. And I think, uh, this is it, rightly mentioned, this is that the more clinical, but they've done very well. Mm-hmm. And then Gambia should be very proud of this uh, unit, of uh, this crop of footballers that we have. And then, uh, in my small prediction, I believe that we will take uh, Nigeria away on mm-hmm. this. Mm-hmm. That's my and prediction. The and final. my final will be uh, the ones that I am making predictions from the start of <laughs> the game will be Dakar, Senegal. Senegal, and Senegal. Gambia. Yeah, Senegal. Okay. Wow. <laughs> is that is that is that an ideal final you would love to see, Musa? Um, it's an ideal final. It's a, it's a football competition. They, they, it, it often re- they, it, it often yeah. galvanizes rivalries. Yes, unhealthy rivalries. Um, um, yes, unhealthy. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, I, I want to look at the I mean the sporting aspect of it. Yeah. That's what sports tend to do. Yeah. The more you go forward, yeah. for the, the 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 stronger the opponents and the the bigger the challenge. And I mean, Senegal in the continent right now are a powerhouse in, mm. in our football mm. at every level uh, because of what's happening there. There's inspiration at every level, support, commitment. Mm. That's a little difference we have. And I mean, if only I mean the most African countries could match what's happening in Senegal, then the African football will be a different ball game completely. You and we don't belong to that league yet, but we are doing something immensely you know, well. You know what? I mean, the team's performance have generated the type type of debate is. Should we have more faith in our local coaches than foreign ones? Even people are starting comparing that maybe LIBO have done a better job than Thompson, right, of the senior team. I mean, um, if you, if you, you I mean, I, mean I, I, I would not, um, I mean, no, knowing what football is and uh, knowing what fans are all about. In uh, you know, you know how, what inspired is that they said, Lai said, that he's going for adventurous attacking offensive football, which the government is not known for. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, so they said this guy provides what the Gambians really need in our football and not the defensive minded that Tom managed to get us to the Nations Cup in, in, or without any fantasy. If, if you allow me, in a real, in yes, a real, in a, in a real football world, mm. I mean, football at different levels are different, are played at different levels. Yes. And uh, if you are a coach, and um, which you are not, I am equally not, mm. but as a technical person, any given day and any given time, demanding, depending on your opponents, Mm. As much as you are a team, you equally want to look at what your opponents have to offer. Who are your opponents? Mm. You devise your game equally in terms of the type of players you have. Yeah, but Tom always defends whoever he meets. Yeah, he meets Musa is the same. He, 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 he defends and yet still wins. Well, <laughs> yeah, not, not by merit, but by some. That, that, that will not last. It will be very right. difficult for. I'm not defending him, I'm just mm. trying to really. The yeah, pers- the people have grown comparisons. Perspective so, uh, into. Yeah into what kind of players Tom has at his disposal, mm. at what level is he playing, mm. and mm. what kind of players does like Bojan has his disposal, mm. and what level is he playing. Mm. They are all totally different. Yeah, but look at the approaches, Lai and Sa- Tom Shepard. Okay, Bita, let me tell you have you there. Um, the debate has arisen from, yeah. from this performance of the team, where Lai actually represents the yeah. kind of football that the, Gambis, the direction the Gambians would take, and not necessarily stick with uh, foreign coaches who will just have uh, this defensive and stuff. We may be lucky, but we are technically, um, let's say, technically up. Suppose we meet bigger opposition like we did against Cameroon. If, if we, you know, our team was a lot more adventurous, perhaps Cameroon okay playing at home maybe very much buoyed, but we could probably could have done better. Yeah, um, as Musa said, I think they are looking at these two teams from a different level. Mm. Uh, the Afcon team was at the Afcon uh, f- uh, competition, which is at a higher level. Mm. Uh, the two motivations are different. Mm-hmm. This one, you win to the quarterfinals, you are at the World Cup. Mm-hmm. If that uh, motivation or stake was at the AFCOM, yeah. perhaps mm-hmm. the, 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 the performance of the team would mm-hmm. have been different. Mm-hmm. But if we look at it from that perspective, you know, fans will you know, talk about uh, comparing local coaches and foreign uh, players, uh, mm-hmm. coaches. Mm-hmm. But nonetheless, them, they have different uh, missions and they have Musa, different Musa, approaches. Musa painted a very good picture of Senegalese football and yes. that's done under a local coach. Exactly. Yeah. That's yeah. all yeah. the more reinforced but, the yeah. idea that should we not take a look at Yeah, but, but I mean, if I come in here, mm. the local coach you're talking about at national level, for mean? example, in Aliou Sisi, Aliou mm. is a highly qualified coach. Mm. I mean, he has the vast experience. None, none of our players had the experience that Aliou has mm. in, in, in coaching. And he's gone to the World Cup, he's played it, 
mm -hmm. he's, he's trained, he's qualified places. and everything. None of our coaches that we could even have identified to use, uh, I mean, to be given to a national team has attained what Aliu has. Mm -hmm. So let's put that aside for us. Yes, he's Senegalese. Mm -hmm. yes. But we wish, we wish, yes, he's local, he has the local knowledge. Yes. And even during our, 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 our um, um, I mean, um, during the Congress in Aliu, Aliu Sisa was there and uh, he, he, he spoke about the need for African federations mm. to start trusting mm. their, local, their local, local coaches, yeah. but mm. but they have to be trained first. Mm. And our coaches are not yet trained yet mm. to be given our main national teams. Supposedly, for example, Gambia. Mm -hmm. For example, mm -hmm. let's be honest. Yes, we only had people who are doing a certain level of coaching out there, but to be entrusted with a national team is a huge ask for every single Gambian right now who is coaching in the Gambia or outside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you would you like to be drawn as to uh, where, where we should stick with the local coaches, give them have more faith? Mm -hmm. this, is, this is another sport politics. But I mean, <laughs> <laughs> in, in truth, in truth, uh, Ali was the most criticized coach. Yeah. Yes, I told him this thing in the whole world. In that yeah. country, in the whole world, I think yeah. that he's the most criticized, but he and was able to prove mm -hmm. his critics down. Mm -hmm. Not only on that one was he was delivering and was, you know, he have ignored everything about the criticism and the movement. He has an objective and which he is able to roll through and Senegal, he made Senegal proud. So it's not only, even if you are well trained, if you don't have that mindset and you're not very sharp to, mm -hmm. to take up the challenge and the criticism and what it come along with, I'm sure you're going to be confused along the way. But uh, we need to be trained well, he's very true, they need to be very trained. But they need to know that they have a mission and then be very much steady on the on the job. Otherwise, one like the, this guy is like his own team. Mm. We are even undermining him to get him out mm. and bring in maybe a foreign coach or whatever. It and didn't work. The, the president, mm. Senegalese football president, Senghor stick. So he's gone. Mm. This is this is belief because mm. Aliu's Aliu, Aliu's point mm. is that whatever target they have given him, he has satisfied. He has achieved. Mm. He's mm. achieved it already. Mm. So there is no. The president trusted him, and that is why they stopped by him. I mean, I mean, gave him a pay increment, mm -hmm. and he's still delivering. So, what's the yeah. first? You don't need, you don't change a winning team. Yeah. And this, well, is a, this, this is a belief that many people have. Yeah. The moment you set up a team and it starts winning for you, depending on your opponents, you don't change it. Mm -hmm. Okay, sure. Right. Uh, let's talk a little bit about, about the Congress of the African Sports Journalists Association, uh, which uh, have elected Senegambia, so to speak, <laughs> as the head of the African body. The Senegalese sports journalist president is the president of African sports journalists and the Gambian sports president, sport journalist president is the secretary of the sports journalist association. Now, what does this mean for you now? Because it now means that the two of you will run the sports journalist association of Africa. Yes. What will be your priority? <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is this is, is an amazing feature. And, um, um, it, it, it is a huge ask and a huge responsibility equally for, for the sports press media in Africa. And um, this is also something that we are, we are answerable to the global body. Mm. And um, that's AIPS Association of the International Sports Press. Um, our agenda, it, it, it's simple. It is a tough one uh, because of what's happening in African sports. We need to see how best we bring cohesion into representation of African sports how best we help save African sports press in the continent as to what they're doing, how best we continue exposing I mean, the sportsmen and women in Africa into the events that matters most where Africa is. And I mean, just an example is, for example, in Gambia here, I want to believe that we are the least exposed, I mean, sports press in, in the continent. You, you know something about that very well. Yeah. So for obvious reasons, because, I um, mean, going to events costs a lot a lot of money and i um, mean no media house i um, mean tend to be able to at least fund support stand by your mm. staff to do your job and at the end of the day who do you sell your story to are you just a storyteller for no reason and no income i um, mean no, no no return yeah. so these are some of the things because the 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 other big thing is that i uh, mean we need to be in touch with the sports i um, mean institutions organizations or uh, I mean, continue the continental bodies in the Africa in, in, in harm and see how best we look at how to address the youth issues in sports, for example, ANOCA, mm -hmm. 
the Association of National Olympic Committees, um, in the CAF, so you know, in the AU, ECOWAS, SEDEC, right, so um, I mean, I mean, COSAFA, so all these you things. Want to we, relevance. We, we, relevance yeah. to tell them what is at stake in here. How can we go about representing African sports? How can we sell African sports and African youth and all those things? And of course, in, with true sports and our popular participation in global events. Good. Congrats there, and well, good luck in your mission, you and I'm like champ. Uh, that, uh. Now, AfriSport, in case you are hearing it for the first time, is the championship that brings together all workers from Africa. The event is so big and huge that you can have a delegation of 70 people, you know. So together, the Gambia is expecting close to 200 delegates uh, to take part in the championship being hosted in Banjul here. Now, the corresponding national association for that organization is the National Intersports Association, NISA, whose president is uh, Seku Jaju and secretary is Palai Bide. They are with us in the studio. Now, the championship starts on the 6th to the 12th, but already some delegates have started arriving. But the organizational challenges still remains. So I will ask you, Mr. Jaju, have you put together everything it takes to host Africa in an event of this magnitude. Yeah, thank you, Lamy Cham. Thank you, Cham. Uh, yes, we are doing most of what we could, but uh, all the parameters are not in place. <laughs> For the fact that uh, uh, organizing such a continental championship and then Congress, for that matter, because there's two events we're talking about. We're talking about the Continental Co Congress, where we expecting 50 delegates from almost close to. 50 countries, but uh, also we have in about uh, 22, 20, but uh, it, uh, with the exception of uh, with the exception of uh, Tunisia, mm -hmm. that uh, was uh, to send up close to almost 68 people, but they have to call off their cancel their flights given the what is the, uh, the situation that is happening in Africa. But we expected close to 20 countries. That would be converging in, in Banjo. From the 6th to the 12th, From that's the Monday onwards. Yes, it's true that uh, the advanced delegation at the executive council level mm. have arrived. The president of Loster is already here, Dr. Eveli Malik from Cameroon. The secretary general is already in here. That is uh, the continental body. Yes, yes that the continental, all of them are in the continental uh, body. Yeah. So you would see that, uh, yes, we find it very difficult on the area of sponsorship. Uh, we would have loved to, we would have thought that uh, a lot of companies would just quite quickly associate themselves. But this is the first time, for the first of its kind, that we are hosting such a continental championship. And then... Yeah, I'm amazed about the huge amount of delegates that you are expecting in hundreds. Yeah. You're going to have a Congress of Africa, just as Musa and others have, yes, yeah. uh, yes, and yes. you're also going to have a championship. Yes. Yet here you sit, you don't even have your basic logistics together. Yeah. Now, this is supposed to be government program because we are hosting yes. how much is the involvement of government i know private sponsorship for sports unlike senegal mm. is very difficult mm. but the central government yes. uh, be this being a gambian event should take the lead how much involved is the government the well, ministry of sports for uh, well uh, i i think uh, the government was uh, greatly involved uh, to, to the fact that uh, without the blessing of the gambia government through the ministry of youth and sports we would not have had the uh, opportunity to this thing because they have to support the bidding process. Okay, they, they supported support support the bidding, bidding process. process. Of course, of course. And the Gambia won the bid. The Gambia because we were bidding against uh, Congo and then Rwanda. And the Gambia supported your bid. Yes, and you Gambia you won the bid. Yes, your government has to support the bidding process, uh. and then they, we happen to win the bid. And then uh, that's a big, big, big plus on the part. That was government in again. Yes, of course. But after course. winning the bid, aren't the government not in the picture in your preparations? So that by now we would have told that the government has already made a budget, they have representation and stuff like that. Why are you struggling with the basic things like uh, having a budget to host Africa if the government is involved? No, no pre precisely from uh, the, 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 what we have already uh, been informed is that the budget have already been informed. We have provided the budget to the Gambia government, the conservative budget. The Ministry of Sports. Ministry of Sports and then we are told that it has been approved but uh, you know the whole thing was like uh, follow up and then so two days to the tournament you haven't got your budget when your delegates have started arriving yes you know it's sometimes uh, when it has to do with financial matters uh, running from one direction yes the minister of sports is working close they are part of 
even the NOC that uh, uh, one would, one would, one, so one, about it, one would be tempted to issues. blame your association's slow progress in getting the government uh, involved. Is it that you have not been doing the timely follow-ups? You announced the date of the championship since a long time ago. Yes. You formed a, um, a local organizing committee that involves the ministry. Yes. Yet here we are, inside the tournament, you haven't got a budget. Who's to blame? Government? Slow or you yourself for not doing the, uh, I mean, no, a timely no, follow-up? No. If, if the government have already approved mm -hmm. and now now it's left with the kind of level of bureaucracy to get it done yeah yeah you know saying it could be one person who is just sitting over it mm -hmm. or working but at the level of the government we definitely can tell you that uh, yes they have given because they are with us and they also concern as we do to say definitely we'll get it even some days ago when we have our uh, other NOC meeting they assured us that definitely tomorrow you're going to get the money but you see, that was one week ago yes you still haven't got the money yes yeah but you know it's the level of uh, situation but we're hoping that maybe possibly monday. Mm. monday they can come up clean and then get us this funds so is that not frustrating I mean, it could be frustrating knowing that what it takes to put up. I mean, if you were to host Africa Sports Journalist, uh, now you are the second my, my word. And 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 on one victory day, I, I don't, you, don't you don't have the funds. What are you going to feel? I don't want to be in that situation. Well, you don't want to be. There. I, I don't. Want, I, you know how yeah. it feels. But, but when it's, it's, it's when feeling. It. Absolutely, absolutely. I would be worried if I were the. I am equally worried. Yeah, worried. worried. I mean, but I'm, but I'm, this is about Gambia. This yeah. is about Gambia. Yeah. Yeah. If it fails, it's Gambia fail. Absolutely. And this is what, for adding, for example, what Sey was talking about in terms of. You know, when these kind of events are taking place, it's always important that to bring everyone up to speed yes. to understand. That's why I'm yes. saying whether they are not doing it right for over the time. Or I, mean, what? I mean, I wish I could say they, 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 they are or the government is, but what I want to say is that most of the time it's important that anybody involved in some of these things need to be of faith mm -hmm. as to what's at stake. Yes, exactly. I mean, it's a national event. It's, I mean, yes, it's different, if at all. I mean, the coffers are there, not very much, you know, I mean... You know, this is why people criticize the government for yes, prioritizing for some football. Yes. Mm. They cough 93 million in one day for to get us into Cameroon. Mm. These people are hosting 200 people, they can't even have money. Yeah, but, but, but That's why yeah. people say government is interested more in football than anyone else. I, I, I wouldn't say that. It's not I, only I, I, I mean, I, I wouldn't say that, but I think uh, they're all they equally important. Case, yeah. You can compare, but um, what I want to say is that at least sometimes I will stick by what I said is that it's very important that everyone involved in some of these things, whether you're the administrator sitting in the finance ministry or in the youths and sports, that you know the importance of this event. If you are to even put up an extra 15 minutes or 30 minutes in the office to make sure that this thing is dealt with in time so that you can give them peace of mind. Because what's going to happen with this, knowing what it takes to put off events, this is a distraction. Yes, huge distractions, and it may it, it may you know it may affect other. It or may order. for our sporting image. Yes, if, if the whole no, of no, no, even goes. even not, I mean for them even as organi organizers, yeah. it's, it's a huge distractions, and it's going to I mean uh, I mean it's not going to help them at all. Yeah, in terms of concentrating in the in the deliverables. I mean, yeah. for such for such an event. Yeah, because they are Gambia. When you say they, it's Gambia. Yeah, I mean, Gambia. that's what I mean. Yeah, so it's, it's, I mean, let me say Gambia because it's, yeah, they, they, they're Gambia. here for Gambia. And, so um, what should be done now, uh, Bitte? What uh, what do you think should be done? Uh, Musa, thank you. And um, I think what we need to do is to push further. Um, we have gone to a point of no return. Mm -hmm. uh, we have g the, the reason why we, I mean, uh, win the bidding is the convincing um, approach that we put forward. Yeah. That the Gambia can host this. We have the capacity. We have the manpower. We have the financial and other resources to host this uh, kind of um, activity. Mm -hmm. And we were supported by the government, as uh, Mr. Yayu said. So when it comes to the actual implementation of the program and then financial issues start to come up, it's not a good uh, sign. And uh, we're dealing with other African countries who have very high hopes and uh, expectation to us. And we must look at this from a perspective of a national issue. This is a national event and we need to help each other. Participate at government level, at NISA level, and other stakeholders because we are approaching also other sponsors to come on board. We've got some that came in, like the um, uh, Trust Bank, you know, they assisted, and we have the uh, Food Safety, uh, Gamtel, Gamsel, NRA, and some few other sponsors. But the main ones that we expect are not coming, especially the main government budget. If that had come, we would have, you know, gotten things done on the way. You know, but our concentration now is really, you know, that, you know, our attention is, you know, been, uh, you know. You know, you know I, I mentioned this because <coughs> yeah. if. Like Musa said, I mean, it's also important for people in the forefront mm -hmm. are very much okay with what it takes to organize exactly. these things. Exactly. And I guess 
Nisa has been around for long. Uh, yeah. Quite experienced, have yeah. been sending yeah. teams to yeah. these things. Senegal, now, yeah. if the government can pay mm. six million to the Olympic Games, uh, to the National uh, National Olympic Committee, six yeah. million dollars, yeah. was, was it seven? Or I think it was seven, six million, ninety-three million, or two hundred million to the yeah. squad and uh, the national team. You look about planes being chartered, everything. <laughs> now we are hosting Africa. Africa yeah. One nation can bring seventy delegates. So you people might end up having three to four hundred people exactly. in the next couple exactly. of days. Exactly. Exactly. You don't have any time to to even uh, take care of the logistics. That of is the, where the challenge comes. That's what I'm telling the Gambia. We may have a crisis in our hand. Yeah, I think, I think let me come in there. It's very good. It's a good point, a valid point. Uh, you see, the interesting part of it, which we're trying to we're trying to do a connect worker sport, is all about uh, connection. Networking. And networking. It's all about that one. Sometimes it's not even the trophy or the what the accolade you go with, but the participation and then the collectivism and so forth. This is what we are trying to focus very much on. Now, some of the companies are coming and they will try to bring on board their counterpart com companies in the Gambia mm -hmm. and you will find it very, very difficult. Mm -hmm. Example, uh, Rwanda is coming with their uh, revenue authority, the, the, just like the GRA. The GRA yeah. You would have loved GRA to come on board. Yeah. Yeah. And you chase it to get GRA on board and then it's difficult. You're getting... Uh, uh, oh, water, water. They are coming with their water division. Yeah. Water water like, 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 yeah. You're chasing them to get in them, it's difficult. You, uh, Senegal is coming with the port authority. Mm. Port, so it's it's you, yeah. and then you have the uh, if, uh, Congo is coming with their presidential uh, guard team. The, team the, the presidential president. guard team. Yeah. Yeah. So the, you our have, equivalent of state guards. State mm -hmm. guards, yes. That's so why we were there has not been enough so sensitization. Connectivity we trying, we struggling is 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 kind of difficult. And then the Ministry of Education. Um, Ministry then senior superior, that's the higher education uh, yeah, that's higher is education. coming, and then their treasury, that is their treasury, our treasury. Yes, our treasury, equivalent of our treasury. So they're sending different, different groups that are coming, and it would have been good to have them connected. Like this this program, we KMC will be hosting one, and then BCC will be hosting some oh, of the some events. events will but be even to, and KMC. To get them Did you contact home, the municipalities to say, them you are going to, this thing is going to happen to you, perhaps yes, they can keep it? Yes, yes, so we tried and we gave them budgets, but uh, up to now, no response, up to date. So it's, it's kind of frustrating, it's like... Uh, Yes, is, it, uh, is it the timing also? Because the, um, the councils are in politics, <laughs> the central government is in politics. You know, so it's, 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 also, it's difficult right? to be an island. I mean, uh, you know, I mean, some of these things, you know, you have to. And I, I just want to honestly also, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, look at what it takes to put up such an event. I mean, Seho and Nisa have been here for a while, yeah. but it's the first time they're putting up such yeah. a, an event of this magnitude yeah. and uh, do, all do, the logistical do nightmare. They, do you it think they, they, they're a little bit premature to? to um, to I mean, be, I mean, to they, be for such a big um, event. I don't know. Sales, 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 but if you are telling me that, if you are telling to. me that you did it the right <laughs> time, and you did, let take My, all the all the necessary steps. Okay, uh, let, no. let me okay, let me tell you. This video was done in 2021. 2020 was a good year. Mm -hmm. One year ago. Mm -hmm. And is that when well, it could have been is December? That, is that it when could, the, the it right could also be December 2020. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like the All Africa Games that has been postponed now. That was given to Ghana, Ghana in 2020. Yeah. Yeah. And still, it just been. And if you talk about representation, this it's almost only yeah, one yeah. Yeah. the so, kind of delegates who can come. Yeah, it's, it's the same thing. So, um, anyhow, Seo has its own. But that has been postponed or cancelled even before delegates arrive. In our case, we have delegates on the plane as we speak, others are airborne. In fact, Congo is arriving. Today with 38. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, they're already on the way coming, and then uh, they will be followed by Rwanda is coming almost with oh, 71 yes. delegates. So this is how they will be coming. Senegal alone has two set. One set already is coming with 100 delegates, and then on the pattern side they will be coming Rwanda with Rwanda and Senegal alone is 200. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, so, 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 so you are talking about that one. Really you, you, you're not getting the excitement really that we want Gambia to, and we are on the television every other yeah, moment to there, give uh, to make Gambians understand. We wrote to its mm -hmm. future, but it's uh, this uh, mm, I don't know. Sponsorship fatigue or whatever, then the rest of always is uh, well, it's, it's always always is even like football, uh, <laughs> even football is more popular, has problems. Yeah, 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 Actually, yeah. And then you we, having yeah. three, six disciplines to put together. Mm. You have football eleven aside, and then six aside football. You have volleyball, both male and female. You have handball, both mm. male and female. You have petang. That's going to be introduced for the first time because our objective is to have a Petang Federation because it's, it's the most, I mean, it's not the most, but at least it's a very loved game mm -hmm. in the surround, in the sub region. Because it's one game where even with 
10, 10, 10 courts or 20 courts, one referee can play it. It's so organized, no quarreling, no howling and so forth. And man. then you do it yourself and you are counting your figures. There's never hardly a moment it's one a referee can play like yeah, 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 sport. Yeah, yeah, like so you're yeah, just like exactly like yeah, golf. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. you're having that one to be introduced because we want to make sure it is love. It used to happen in the Gambia in those days, in yeah. the 70s going forward. But it comes a time it's disappeared. We want to bring it in the Gambia so that yeah, this thing and then clubs in uh, Mauritania and then Senegal and so forth. We're expecting close to 75 teams, come uh, teams. And then when you say a team, let's not get it confused. Uh, a team is three. Is it is it three? Yeah. So three, three, three. So when you have even if you have 75 teams times three, you are talking about how much? A lot of people. There's yeah. a lot of people for people. This is what we want to host in Banjul, and then we want to work this one with. Uh, uh, Banjul, but uh, you know, it's, it's kind of difficult. that's what I've realized. This Musa, these people have a huge, huge, huge logistical Absolutely. nightmare it's, because it's, it's, the it's, it's, participants it's, it's, it's alone a massive are, one. is massive. Massive. Yeah. massive. Well, we as sports journalists also have a role to play in mm -hmm. this, and, and that's what we are starting here. Mm -hmm. So, if you are the minister of youth and sports or the chairman of the national sports council or the finance minister, Sidi Keta, Bakari Baji, Marcel Mendy. Look, the message is the Gambia is hosting Africa, hundreds of delegates arriving even as I speak, mm -hmm. and there's no money. Get to the bank, get this event funded, mm -hmm. it's in the name of the Gambia. That's it. We yes. have started very early, you can, you, can, you can say it better than that, you know. I mean, yes. that, we that, started very early, six months ago or more than that, we've you know, written our letters, we have approached all the stakeholders that we need to approach. And then we have done all what we need to do. We also have a national organizing committee. That is composed of people from diverse background, you know, with specialized skills on marketing, you know, sports, technical, and other uh, areas whereby they are, you know, performing this uh, activity. But our um, uh, lack of uh, um, funding is our uh, problem. major problem. Got that is the you know challenge that we have. But in terms of the manpower and the, also the knowledge, the, and the, the skills, we, we, you we, have we, that we have it. Yeah, I think, I think we, 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 we believe that we can do it. The yeah. problem is even the Ministry of Sports is even conf is, is, is frustrated by the, the, the pushing they are doing and then nothing is coming. Oh, so, it's so, finance, so, yeah. so, so I think so I will, I will, everything I will. has to go through the finance because uh, they've, 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 they've assured us. We had a meeting even with the Minister and they, they are doing everything. And the Minister is very, very, yeah, they're, 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 they're very positive, very honestly. They, the thing is, we've seen it, we are following it, but it's just not easy to come by, but we are doing... Uh, but you have reached now the crucial, crucial yes, very critical moment now. Very we are in a very difficult moment. Yeah, you, you have reached a very critical yeah. moment. So yeah. we will, we will ask sports journalists, we'll definitely do our role. Yes. The president is here. Yes. We're going to make a massive campaign, get the Minister of Finance, the Minister of Sports on the telephone, whether he knows about this. It's going to be a crisis. We will do that, definitely. We will do our role. Yeah. So, that's about it in the brunch this week. I'm Lavin Chan. Thanks to Musa Asise and congratulations once again, President of the Sports Journalists Association, who is now the Secretary General of the African Sports Association, the continental body of the World Sports Journalists Association. Sheku Janyu, the President of the National Intersports Association, the corresponding chapter of African Worker Sports, uh, Lobster, they call it, yeah. and, and, and Pa Bye, Bite. Bye, Lamin Bite. Well, I said with Lamin, uh, Ba Pa Ba, ba, ba Bite of uh, uh, the uh, NISA. Um, well, thank you very much for being with us, and we're hoping that you, at the end of it, may have a successful championship. Thank you so much. Hope so. Thank, you. thank you so much. We'll be back next week. Thank you for now. Thank you. In a day and age where technology is creating a world without borders, filled with unlimited potential to improve the lives of the people around us. Innovarex Global Health ushers in a new way of leveling the playing field with increased access to quality healthcare services delivered at your doorstep. 
Our qualified professionals are equipped with state-of-the-art point-of-care testing technology to conduct tests such as kidney function, liver function, electrolyte tests, body composition, hemoglobin, A1C, and many more services with the highest efficiency in delivering results. The addition to our flagship, Wellness on Wheels, more fondly known as WOW Delivery Service, brings the entire clinical experience full circle. IGH has remained committed to creating the future of healthcare delivery. Gone are the days of sending loved ones outside the country for basic medical services. Innovarex Global Health offers a new peace of mind and takes pride in delivering the quality of care we all deserve. Islamic microfinance is becoming an increasingly popular mechanism for poverty alleviation, especially for developing countries around the world. This microfinance service adheres to the principles of Islam as a form of social responsibility. Yona Islamic Microfinance is the Islamic microfinance of choice in the Gambia, trustworthy and reliable. At Yona Islamic Microfinance, we provide savings products, current accounts, financing products in conformity with Islam. In addition, Yona Islamic Microfinance also offers local and international remittances, takaful fund, management of zakat, management of awqaf, trading and investment, and building of strategic partnerships to bring financial services to the doorstep of the poor with donor projects, madrasas, youth organizations, women groups, and farmer organizations. Make a choice with Yona Islamic Microfinance today. For more information on Yona Islamic Microfinance, call 377-2151 or 9832-151 or visit Yona Head Office at Tipa Garage, Bakote or visit any Yona branch located countrywide near you.